and I, I went back and forth on a lot of different things, but today's topic is about people who tell me vehemently that they want to make content, that they want me to help them with their content, and then just totally ghost. Okay, that's the topic. So I'm sure a lot of you who are in the client service business can relate. Somebody, maybe it's a friend, maybe it's an acquaintance, somebody you just met, or somebody who just says, hey, like I listened to you, I watched some Gary Vee videos, like I watched some of your stuff, and I, I get it, I wanna make content, I wanna you know, post vlogs and do podcasts and post more on Instagram, and I need somebody to help me. I'm sure you've all been there with, whether it's a content business or maybe it's a totally different business, like yeah, I definitely need some, like a life coach or I need somebody to, uh, or a trainer, right? A fitness trainer, perfect example. Um, I need somebody that can help me, you know, get mad gains <laughs> or, you know, lose 10 pounds, something, right? So people will hound you in the beginning and you say, cool, well, if you're serious about it, um, let me know. Again, they've shown you, you have the leverage of the expertise. So then what you will say to them is, let me know if you need help. And days go by, weeks go by, and then, what I used to do is I used to pursue and chase and give people crazy discounts just because I wanted the work and I wanted to make any, any amount of money. That was the wrong mindset. Now I'm in the situation where I'm not taking it negatively. I'm just in a neutral position. I'm centered, right? I say, if they really, truly are interested, like they said, they will come to me um, and they will you know, start that conversation and we can work together. It's not on me to constantly call and call and call when the potential client is the one that reached out in the first place. Okay, so just remember that. If you're client side, if that's what you do, you deal with clients and they're telling you, these potential clients are telling you they need you desperately and then they don't follow up, it's not on you, that's on them. Now there can be many, many, many situations. Life happens, right? The, the company or the person you're trying to work with or who's trying to work with you is traveling. Maybe they're just busy doing other business things. Like it happens, okay? Um, in the content world, the world that I'm in, these are just excuses, right? And these people are not trying to get you gassed up for no reason. They really, I think their intention is good. They do want to make content, but they're not ready to prioritize it in their life. They're not ready to actually spend the time like they do on their own marketing on, let's call it real estate, like they do following up with leads in their core business. They don't see content and media creation as a core business, which it really needs to be first. Because if you're not building your brand now, you're gonna have to continue to show up like making active income the rest of your career, the rest of your life. Now, the one outlier to the, that conversation is if you're in real estate and you're doing all this active work to get passive rentals and own properties, then yes, you will get passive income and you may not have to work at all um, once that is set up, right? You'll still need to hire somebody to manage it and pay that person, but it, that is essentially passive, right? Anybody else who is just trying to set up their business, let's say, um, you sell beverages and you're, you're like a lemonade, um, you, may, you have your own special lemonade and you're trying to sell it to people online or in person or, I mean, really, it's gotta be online, it's 2022, but in person as well. And you say, great, I had a great year, I sold a bunch of lemonade. You know what, I actually don't need social media. I'm just gonna post about me and my family and whatever I'm interested in and funny memes and sidebar. The thing that drives me crazy is I see so many people post for free about all these companies that they buy, whether it's Jordans, um, Nike clothes, uh, restaurants especially, went out to this great place, you, you should go check it out, free testimonials. How much are you getting paid for that testimonial? Nothing. And yet, I hear no one talk about their own company or personal brand or small business or then to take it one step further, to promote their friends, small businesses and services, right? They're still promoting these huge companies that aren't paying them. And meanwhile, somebody like me, who is out there doing my thing, I, I get no promotion from my friends. Now, I 
Don't expect it. I'm not asking for it, right? But I do think it's a funny thing that all these people will shout from the mountaintops about these big companies, stuff they buy that doesn't make them any money. It's a depreciating asset. I mean, if I buy, like right now, this hat, this Dodgers hat, doesn't pay me any dividends. I just liked it because it was a black hat, right? But the more I wear it, you know, in these videos, the more people see that's a brand I want to associate with. So back to the initial conversation of content uh, or the clients and service business, right? When you're trying to work with a client and they're hollering at you, they're, they're doing everything they can at the beginning just to get your attention and say, yeah, I really want to work with you. And then they ghost you. What do you do? Well, you stay centered. Don't take it personal. First of all, it's business. Don't take it personal. They probably got busy doing something. It just tells me, though, the main thing it tells me is they're actually not ready to take on that responsibility. They're telling you one thing, but show me the money. Well, first, show me the time of day that you actually want to engage in creating a plan and you're actually wanting to be involved in this service. And then show me the money that you're really serious about being involved in the service that I offer. Okay. Um, but yeah, what you do with, with these people is they're just still potential. Just leave them in the potential bin. They'll be there. You don't have to worry. They're not going anywhere. They may eventually come over, but they may not. So what you want to do is not spend too much time thinking about them. And when they're ready, they'll come work with you. The thing you got to do is stick to your purpose. You got to keep going, keep building your business. The bigger it gets, some people might say, oh, wow, Dave wasn't playing he's actually got a whole bunch more clients. And then what's gonna happen for you, great. It's like, I actually don't have a lot of time to help you right now. You, I, when you talk to me, I did, but now you're just gonna have to get the same treatment as every other client. Not that it's bad or worse, but there's definitely gonna be no special treatment, no homey hookup, no discount. Um, because I just, you know, I don't have the time, I don't have the money, don't have the resources. My, you know, my bill is full. Like I had another call. Actually, it's funny after this person hit me up and was interested in me handling their content. I got another call. Uh, I think one of the videos I talked about it from a colleague I haven't worked with in years. And I've since had two good follow ups with them. And that may turn into a big client that I'm going to have to spend a significant amount of time and resources on which doesn't leave me with a lot of time for this person who got to me first, but didn't follow up with any action. So if you're in the client service business, remember you gotta stay centered. You can't have preferential treatment for people that are just giving you lip service and not giving you any of this service, right? So that was a thought I just wanted to share today because I know there's a lot of people out there who maybe they're starting their business or they're in the middle like me they're grinding it out. They're trying to find the right mix of clients. You know, we all want the clients that are easy that pay the most. Uh, because I'll tell you, the difficult clients always want a discount and they always, always, always make your life miserable, even though they're getting the best deal. What happens is you're not getting the best deal because they're paying the least amount and they're wanting the most work. The clients that are easiest usually pay you the most like nine out of 10 times, like 9.9 .9 out of 10 times. They'll pay you the most and they're the easiest to deal with because they trust you. Hey, you're the expert in this area. You know what you're doing. Here you go. Here's the money. As long as you do what you say you're going to do, we have no issue. They don't need you to go way above and beyond, but they want you to meet the bar, uh, meet the mark. They want you to set a bar, set the expectations and constantly hit it. Right? So, I hope that's helped some people who may be struggling with um, getting ghosted by a potential new client. Look, it happens. It's going gonna, it's gonna to keep happening. So just get used to it. And it, they don't mean anything personal. And guess what? You can still have a good relationship with that person or that company or still be friends with them if it's one of your friends. It's, it's not a big deal. You just say, hey, when you're ready, come on over. No big deal. No rush. I don't need your money. But if you want to work together, I am here. The door is open. So like, subscribe, comment, share this. I think this one actually would help some of you entrepreneurs out there who 
maybe get a little too anxious and want to chase that potential new client. There's no need to do it. You don't need to do it. Just keep your door open. They'll come back.